Here we have another example where we are interested in finding the phase margin of transfer function T of S. To do that, we first need to determine the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency is the frequency for which the gain of the transfer function is 0 decibels, or the magnitude is 1. We can rewrite T of S as a function of J omega. T of S becomes 10.5 divided by 1 plus J omega over 5 j omega times 1 plus j omega, 1 plus j omega over 10. Now it becomes easy to find the magnitude of t, uh, this should be j omega, and this magnitude is the magnitude of 10.5, that is 10.5, times the magnitude of this 0, the magnitude is a real part squared, plus the imaginary part square, which is omega over 5, square root of that, divided by magnitude of j omega is simply omega, magnitude of 1 plus j omega is omega squared plus 1, is square root, and finally we have 1 plus omega over 10, is squared. And if you are interested in the crossover frequency, this must be equal to 1. We can now take the square of both sides of this equation. We end up with 10.5 squared times the square root here cancels. So 1 plus omega over 5 squared. And you can multiply 1 by the entire denominator here. Remember that we are taking the square of both sides of this expression. So this is omega squared times omega plus 1, omega squared plus 1, times 1 plus omega over 10 squared. So we ended up with this giant equation here. The order is 6, so this is complicated to solve by hand, and you're not expected to know how to solve this by hand. So you can simply use a, a software to solve for this or a calculator. I'll give the final answer here. If you isolate for omega and solve for it, the crossover frequency should satisfy this expression and it should be 4.956 or approximately 5 radians per second. Now that we have the crossover frequency, let's call this omega c, we can evaluate the phase of the transfer function at the same frequency. What is the phase of this transfer function? The phase will be the phase of all zeros, in this case inverse tangent of imaginary part omega over 5 divided by the real part 1. This is for the zero. Now minus the sum of the angle of all poles. We have a pole of the origin. We know that that has a phase of negative 90 degrees. Minus the phase of this pole, inverse tangent of its imaginary part divided by the real part, and minus the phase of the last pole, imaginary part, omega over 10, divided by the real part, 1. We can now use the phase, the crossover frequency we calculated here, just replace it in there, and the phase of the transfer function at the crossover frequency will be negative 139 degrees. So basically we are solving this equation when omega equals to around 5 radians per second. Very well, now that we have the phase, we can calculate the phase margin. The phase margin is defined as 180 degrees minus the magnitude of the phase of the transfer function when the frequency is the crossover frequency. This is 180 degrees minus the magnitude of negative 139, which is 139. And this gives the phase margin as 41 degrees. So this means that the phase can be increased by 41 degrees without changing the magnitude of the transfer function and the system would still be closed loop stable.